Hi guys, welcome to Clever Studies YouTube channel. Today I want to explain you know how to create a Databricks account, and also I will try to explain uh, you know how to use it. Okay, by walking through you know, some of examples. To install Databricks, we have to go to Google and just type Databricks. Okay, Databricks, and here you see. Databricks website right so you will redirect to this page a click on get started for free so uh, you will redirect to this page where you have to enter your details like uh, your name email company phone number is optional anyway and choose the respective country which you are belongs to and click on continue so it will send some confirmation email once you verify it that's it so this is login page for Databricks Community Edition. Just enter your credentials and sign in. So once you sign in first time, then you may not see these kind of uh, recent documents because I already worked. So it's showing, but in your case, it may be empty. Okay. If you click on data, then uh, this page will redirect and just click the create table you will see this option we can upload a file directly or drag and drop okay so you just do a select now click on it and uh, just take a randomly one file so it got uploaded and this is uh, the path is here like file store table input and test right so this is one way to upload a file and uh, and we can also get the data from s3 and any other dbms system and right and other data sources as you see these are the data sources that we can get it so yeah there are multiple uh, connectors that are available to bring the data from outside so data sources to Databricks environment. Okay, so again you just go here and click. So this is the file uh, which we uploaded just now. This is how we we can able to upload our data into Databricks environment and work further. Okay, guys. So this is completely free edition where you no need to pay any amount. But there is a limitation that is, uh, you know, when you when you use a cluster, right? So you may not, you won't create a mul multiple cluster. You may create only one cluster. That is a limitation. For learning purpose, I can strongly recommend this uh, Databricks Community Edition where you can practice your Spark. And whereas if you choose any other platform or if you want to go a custom installation, then uh, that will eat a lot of your time, right? So better use this, which is uh, which is available as a SaaS model, where you no need to do anything. Simply you log in and just use it. That's it. Okay. And uh, if you click on this pane, then uh, here uh, you know we can create a notebook or table or cluster. Okay and uh, you know to work on databricks then it is recommended to create your own workbook let us say or i will give a clever studies clever studies clever studies folder see this so i create a clever studies folder then inside it we can create a you know a notebook so what language you can choose uh, on, on on that basis then uh, we may have to write our code so let us take this is uh, the python and uh, we haven't created cluster it so that is why we are not seeing just uh, try to create it if you go to uh, this folder then if you click on it then this is a you know a demo uh, notebook where we can go ahead and write some code and execute it right and we'll come back here and before that i want to go to a uh, compute where we will get a chance to create a cluster 
because it will take some time to create a cluster just click on uh, create compute okay give any cluster a clever studies and you can use uh, any version out of these let let's assume let me take this one only by default see these are the configuration for this cluster right so one driver and 15.3 gb memory two cores and one dbu that is databricks unit okay it's kind of a cpu you can assume so then create a cluster right it will take some time because first time we are creating right it will take some time and uh, it will create for us so meanwhile what we will do just explore another areas like we already uh, you know seen this workspace how we can utilize and uh, and recent is pretty much easy because see these are the my previous working so we can easily come here and get get our previous uh, note, notebooks and search you can search any any you know a document or folder here and then data and uh, when we upload any data right then we will see those data here or when we create any tables or databases right those details also we will see here right so computer already explained and workflows are not available but this community edition because we have to upgrade uh, you know to work on this workflows concept right so yeah in real time of course we supposed to work on uh, you know this window also because when we schedule a jobs then definitely we should create some workflows and then run it right so but for practicing purpose i can say it's not needed but yeah uh, going forward if we get a chance to work on it then we will try to you know do some hands on on this also right and just go back here and check whether our cl cluster got created or not when we create a cluster then uh, it uh, you know if it creates successfully then we will see this kind of information where we'll see here 15 gb is a memory and uh, cores are two and db is one so this is how it looks like if you go to workbook and uh, or recent let me open a new one that is uh, create rdd let us say this is a workbook where we which i created previously in my you know you can say in previous session so this is how we have to write a code and let me open one more for you and you will get more clarity so i'm just opening one more see this so i will show you how to upload a file and uh, uh, and how to use here and how to create a data frame and we will do some hands-on in upcoming sessions okay guys thanks for watching me